तो वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज लेक्चर टू डायरेक्ट टैक्सेशन सी एम इंटरमीडिएट डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी यूजफुल फॉर बोथ ओल्ड एंड न्यू कॉन्सेप्ट ओल्ड एंड न्यू कोर्सेज सो वी वर डूइंग बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट लेक्चर सो विल बी कंप्लीटिंग दिस चैप्टर टूडे सो आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस चैप्टर विल गो फॉर अ ब्रेक एंड वेन वी कम बैक विल स्टार्ट विथ रेजिडेंशियल स्टेटस ओके so we finished all these parts yesterday okay students who are giving only one group you will have ample time to revise because you're going to do dt for 3 days because these are 4 hour lectures you might need more time to revise okay so students who are giving two groups okay i would suggest that you all uh, okay uh, continue for one one and a half months and then take stock of the situation whether you are completing proportionate course or not okay based on that you can consider moving back to one group okay but if you are uh, going well then you can continue with both groups Okay, so all these things we have finished. So we had to continue from here. What we did was we just uh, completed the seven persons definition of seven persons. Now we are going to start with examples of these. Okay, so. First is Howrah Municipal Corporation. What person is this? Local authority. Local authority. Good. This is local authority. And then Corporation Bank Limited. Company, sir. Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. Individual. And Amitabh Bachchan Corporated Limited. Company. Joint family. H A F sir. Okay. Calcutta University. Ah, uh, A J P sir. Artificial Judicial Person. Okay. And. B O I sir. Okay. So this is B O I. I hope you are not looking and answering. No sir, I am not having anything in my hands. Sir, currently having my books on this one. Okay. So, sole proprietorship business. Sir, it. I think it's an individual business, individual one, sir. And firm. I uh, firm, sir, which includes LLP. That. That one. Good. Okay. Now we'll continue with income. Can you give me some examples of? <laughs> Uh, cases where you have to do the assessment in the same previous year. Uh, sir, uh, shipping business, sir. Okay, very good. And uh, who is avoiding tax? Uh, should be taxed in the same year. Okay. And uh, NR uh, income from uh, N uh, NR, sir, non-resident. Income of? I I mean non-resident. Uh, That one, sir. Non-resident, that is shipping business, right? Okay. okay. So fine. Okay. Then there are persons leaving India. Okay, and discontinued businesses. Okay. Formed for short period, sir. Yeah. Body formed for short period. Okay. Okay. Fine. So you can just revise that again. Okay. So what you will have to see, or anyone who is giving both groups, okay. So you should watch, monitor for one month, okay. Monitor yourself for one month, 
and just see whether you are able to complete whatever syllabus you should complete for all eight subjects. Okay, based on that, you should continue for both groups or start with one group. Okay. So then, income. Okay, so we will we will monitor it month by month wherever you are standing. Okay. So uh, now we are going to start with income. The section T twenty four. The section is not important for you. Okay. So income may be received in cash or kind. Okay. So if it is received in kind, the market value, fair market value will be considered as the income. Okay. And here, for salaries, house property, and capital gains, method of accounting is irrelevant. And for PGBP and other sources, okay, method of accounting is relevant. So for this, what I used to tell you all is, say one, two, Three, four, five. Okay. So one is what? Salaries. Two is house property. Three is PGBP. Four is capital gains. Five is income from other sources. So always remember for three and five, method of accounting is important. Okay. Because PGBP has some connection with other sources. Okay. So three and five and method of accounting is important. For the others, method of accounting is not important. Since salaries, you will not be maintaining any account as such. Correct. Your employer will be giving you your PC. House property also, you will be getting payment periodically only. There's no real need to maintain accounts. Okay. Right. Similarly, for capital gains, because capital gains income will not be there every year. Only when you sell any capital assets, you will have capital gain income. Okay. Fine. Then, notional income is not income. It should be real income. Okay. You cannot earn income from yourself. Right? So, notional income is like transfer of transfer from one department to another department. That's called as notional income. Okay. So, what is actually taxable is the profit of the company, not what is transferred from one department to another. Okay. Then. Capital receipt is not liable to tax unless specifically provided. Okay. So your uh, all these heads of income except capital gains, they provide for only revenue nature profit. Okay. So they provide for revenue nature profit, not capital nature. Fine. So a capital receipt normally is not liable to tax unless we have some additional information it is making it liable to tax. Okay. Revenue income is there, you will always directly take it to tax. Unless you have some information which is rendering it not liable to tax. Okay. Then negative income is also income that we all know. Right. That's why you have the procedure of set off. When you have loss in one head, you can set it off with another thing. Okay. Then next is reimbursement of expenses is not income. Okay. So when uh, you are incurring an expense, okay, you already incurred it out of your profit, out of your pocket, and you are getting it back because it's no income for you. What you have spent, you are getting it back. Okay. And then if there is a dispute regarding title of income, for example, there are three brothers, right? They have uh, got the house of their father, right? Now there's a dispute amongst them regarding the title of the house. But there is a tenant in the house already. Okay. So there is income, correct? The income tax department will tax that income. And who will be taxed? The person who is receiving the Income will be fixed. Okay. 
right? No difference between legal and illegal income for income tax department. Okay. Even if it is illegal income, it will be taxed. And double taxation is not permitted. You can only tax any income once. Okay. Right. So these are your some basic points of income. The next thing which we're going to discuss is income from mutual activity. Do you know what is mutual activity? We're going to in discuss income from mutual activity. Okay. Have you heard of mutual activity? Income from so mutual activity is something where you know you you have a close knit group. Okay, for example, like um, you know there are some housewives and all who come together. They put some money. They meet every week. They call it as BC. I don't know whether you know or not, but whatever name it is given. Okay, so they all some housewives. Say ten housewives are coming together. They're just meeting. It's like a get together. All of them put similar amount of money. Let's say they're putting 2,000. All of them are putting 2,000. So what is done is there are 10 housewives. They're putting 2,000. Everyone together has put 20,000. Okay. So this 20,000 will go to any one of those housewives. Okay. So this is called as uh, so this is a Mutual activity between them. They're putting money and they are only taking that money. And how they will decide who will take it? They put cheats. Whoever and the name, whichever name comes, that person will get the income. They get the income. So in the end, everybody is going to get, correct? Next month also they will put similar money. Only thing is like whether you are getting in the beginning or later on. That's the only determinant. This is one of the things I gave this example because you would be aware of this. Okay, this kind of meetings happen huh? between housewives. So, so but so normally that so this is a kind of mutual activity. So mutual activity is something where uh, from a uh, from a business terminology. Okay, so many businessmen they just invest in let's say clubs. Okay, this is for recreation purpose. Okay, there will be many people, let's like say 500 or 1000 businessmen, okay, who will be investing some money for a club where they can go and relax there. Any income which comes out of the club is put in the club itself. Nobody takes it out. Once they have put the money, the whole money is being used for recreation purpose. They are not taking anything out as income. So it is called as mutual activity. Okay. You will found, find it in clubs. You can find it in insurance business also. Mutual insurance business. Okay. Something like that. Uh, you can have. There will be several kind of mutual activities. So main part of mutual activities, they won't take any income out. Because they are not taking anything out. It is exempt. So income from mutual activity as a general principle is exempt from it. So now there are three exceptions to it when it is taxable. Normally it is not taxable. Okay, Income from mutual activity is not taxable. But there are three exceptions which we need to know. Okay. So the first one is income derived by a trade professional or similar, similar association from specific services to its members. Okay. So sometimes what happens in these kind of associations, okay, you're going into a club, for example. Okay. In that club, many different people come. Say some doctors also come. Okay. And say you have also gone there. Right. At that time, you have some illness or whatever because there is a doctor next to you you can speak directly okay, and uh, 
get some advice, correct? Had you gone outside, you would have had to pay some money to the doctor, correct? So is the what is the purpose of this club? It is recreation, it is not to give professional advice, which is taxable, correct? So these things are called as specific services. Okay. So if any specific services are given. Okay. Uh, by the mutual organization, if they are giving some specific services which is outside the scope of their mutual activity. The scope of the club is what recreation. Okay, but if they are uh, if they are creating such a situation, okay, okay, Ajay, that's fine. Okay, so. Now, if, for example, a uh, club is created for recreation, but they are allowing people to take advice from each other, that is some professional advice, which is taxable, then they will have to pay tax for whatever is the value of that service, right? So that is called as, that is called a specific service. Specific service means a service for which the mutual activity has not been formed. It's a taxable service. Okay. So that is specific service and then profits and gains of mutual insurance business. Okay. So now uh, carried on by a mutual insurance company or cooperative society. See, mutual so insurance business, even though it is mutual, okay, there is always some income out of it, which is why it is normally deemed to be taxable. Okay. Insurance mutual business, how it will work is there will be many people, let us say 500 people. Okay, They are now putting some money every month. Let us say they are putting uh, 2000 rupees per month, per year. Okay. 1000 rupees per year they are putting. 2000 rupees per year means total collection Yearly is 10 lakhs. Okay. Total collection is 10 lakhs. So this, nobody will get this money back. But if there is any event, that is whatever insurance they are providing to their members here. Okay. For example, they are providing, let us say, uh, insurance if, the, if their house is gone. Okay. So only when that event occurs, they will giving they'll be giving some money out of this 10 lakhs to them. Okay. Otherwise, not. Now, this in insurance business, what happens? Whatever you spend, okay, at the end there will be something remaining. Right. So say in in a certain year, there is no there's no need for giving out insurance money. Okay. Let's say there is no no event and they didn't need to give insurance money. And what will happen? This whole money will rate will remain. Okay. So there is the business nature of business is such that there is surplus always. So which is why even if it is a mutual business, surplus in insurance business is taxable. Okay. So that, which is why you have this point: profits and gains of a business carried on by a mutual insurance company. Okay. Mutual insurance company or Cooperative society. Okay. Insurance business carried on by mutual insurance company or cooperative society. Okay. Surplus is always taxable because of the nature of the business. Right? Then last is profit and gains of business of banking carried on by cooperative society with members. Like insurance business, this business of banking will always have some income. Okay. So which is why this is kept outside the purview of mutual okay? These are the three exceptions which you will have to remember. Fine. These are exceptions from mutual activity which you will have to remember. Okay. So now next is pin money. Okay. Pin money. So what is pin money? Now this is like nowadays uh, lots of women are also working, but uh, many women still are housewives. Okay, when they are housewives, 
they get some monthly money from their husbands for spending, correct? For running. For running the house, okay? They get some money from their husbands, okay? Let's say whatever, 10,000, 15,000, okay? So from that, they save something. So whatever they save, that is called a spin money. That is not taxable. Okay, that's the point. But if they invest the pin, pin money, say a housewife is collecting pin, she is uh, saving 5,000 every month from a pin money. Gradually, she had saved a, she has saved a lot of money. Let's say she has now, after some years, she has saved 10 lakhs. And she, have in, she has invested the, this money, let's say, in, a, in real estate. And now she is able to get a rent out of it, let's say, of 5,000. So this income, which she is getting out of the invested pin money, this income will be taxable. Okay, Pin money in itself is not taxable. Its income is taxable if you invest. Okay, award. Next is award. So award relating to business or profession okay, is treated as income. So now you can get awards. Most popularly, you can get in salaries. Okay, awards. Apart from that, you can get it under PGBP. If you are where you are getting it from a business, but uh, it is not treated as a part of business, that it will go to other sources. Okay, these are only three heads under which you can get award. So if it is an award for business or profession, it is treated as income. As far as the other heads are concerned, okay, you will have to see the provisions of those heads regarding income. Okay, as far as salary is concerned, if you are just get, getting a gift like as a testimonial, award as a testimonial, because you are getting a certificate or a cup or something, okay, or doing good work, that is not excellent. Okay, this is excellent. Right. Other than that, we will see uh, the treatment of award when we go to specific heads. Okay. Next, embezzlement is income. Embezzlement is what? Do you know what is embezzlement? Without googling. Embezzlement means in Hindi what we call as ghapla. Okay. That is uh, when you are earning money out of unfair means. It's called embezzling money. For example, you are an accountant. Okay. You are handling money worth 50 lakhs. Out of these 50 lakhs, you have somehow siphoned off 2 lakhs. And you are showing only 48 lakhs as in. So this 2 lakhs, which you have obtained out of unfair means, is called as embezzlement. Okay. For in, so from an income tax point of view, income tax will only see what your income is. Okay. It will only see what your income is. Income is. It will not see whether it's fair or unfair. Okay. Have you got any profit? That's what it will see. Now this 2 lakhs is your profit, right? good or bad. Yes. You will spend it for your personal purpose. Okay. So even if you are caught tomorrow, you will be taxed for these 2 lakhs. Okay. It's income from an income tax point of view. Fine. So embezzlement is income. Fine. And then next is any contingent or anticipated income is not taxable. Okay. So any income you, which you might get in future, that is not taxable. Okay, it's anticipated income, right? So if you say that you will become a CMA in your January attempt, okay. So in March, you will get a contract of will get a contract of 25 lakhs. Can this 25 lakhs now? This is in March, correct? 
it is it is it will be in previous year 2324 should this be taxable for previous year 2324 answer is no correct because you don't know whether it's happen it's going to happen or not it's contingent income okay only real income which you have got in hand okay, that is taxable so it can be what not essentially which is received even if revenue is recognized okay then also it is taxable right so you have signed a contract and as per the contract you are going to receive 25 lakhs it is a real contract okay then this will be taxable on accrual basis whatever is the profit for you okay fine then after this subsidy so all these are terms and basic things which we are which we are studying which will help us throughout the course okay. that's what is the chapter basic concept next is subsidy okay and subsidy is treated as income okay why is subsidy treated as income so what is subsidy that we will have to see first okay you can see here in this diagram okay say this is your total cost year to year is your total cost okay so now if government has given you a subsidy subsidy means government is uh, in, uh, bearing some cost because the work which you are doing Government is interested in that work. Okay. Say you are doing some work relating to export or something which government wants to promote. Okay. So government is giving you subsidy. So it is giving you this much of subsidy. So now your cost becomes only this this much. The net cost which I have shown here. The cost is only this much now. Okay. Because subsidy is given by the government. Okay. So this subsidy is treated as income because otherwise, say uh, whatever is your real income, say it is this much. See if your real income is this much, okay. Till here would have been your cost. Till here would have been your cost, and this part would be your profit normally, correct? Okay? But now. This is also your profit, and this part is also your profit. So you have got this back. The cost is only this much. So your subsidy is also taxable as income. Okay. Now, so subsidy is treated as income. And then subsidy given by central government or state government to corpus of trust is not income. This is a special subsidy. Why will government give for corpus means the main fund of trust. Okay. So for why will government give some money for the main fund of trust? Only because the trust would be doing some good work, right? For the general public. That's why government will give money to the corpus of trust. So this is for some good work, not treated as income. Okay. It's it's basically not. Uh, taxable income kind of thing where you are earning income for yourself. Okay. So hence, this is not taxable. Subsidy taken into account for determination of actual cost of asset is not income. Actual cost is something you will learn in capital gains. Okay, actual cost is actually the cost which you are bearing by an asset. It does not include cost borne by any other person or other. Okay. In, for actual cost, say for buying something, you are putting 20,000. Okay. Some other association or trust or whatever, or any other person, he is giving you 10,000 to buy. Okay. So the cost, the asset cost is 30,000, which you want to buy. Okay. And as per actual cost principle, 20,000 will be considered as in cost. Because you are paying 20,000 from your pocket. Okay. So, so now, so if you are already treating something as actual cost, 
if you are going through the actual cost principle details you will see in capital gains okay it's out of purview of this chapter right already from your uh, from your cost actual real cost is 30000 already 10000 has been deducted so in future when you will sell it let us say you are selling it for 50000 okay actually you should have paid tax for 10000 okay if you would have paid all money yourself and profit would have been 10,000, 50 minus 30, okay? But in actual cross principle, it is considered as 40. So you will have to pay tax for 20,000, 40 minus 20, okay? So in, in if you are following actual cost, this subsidy 10,000, whatever you are getting, other person who, who is paying, it is already deducted from cost. So when you will sell, already you are going to pay tax on 20,000. So which is why you don't have to pay separately tax on 10,000, if it makes sense. Okay, so now heads of income and source of income. So one business can have several sources of income. Okay, I am a businessman. I can have a wood business. I can have clothing business. I can have many other businesses. Each business is a source of income. Head of income is PGBP. So under PGBP, when he will file income tax, he will file the gross picture, the net picture. Okay. Whatever income he has earned from all the heads of all the sources of income in club together and show as PGBP. Okay. So that is the difference between head and sources of income. Head is everything consolidated together. Source is each source of income. For example, this business, that business. Right. Then we'll talk about gross total income. Okay. We've got five heads of income, right? Salaries, house property, all these things. We've got five heads of income. Then so okay. this is how your income is computed in short. So any of you who would have filed your own income, you would have an idea of it. So computation of total income for assessment rate 23-24. Look at these five heads of income, which we are going to study one by one. Okay. So, so here, uh, so what will happen? You might have income on some or all of these five. Okay. Whatever income you have, you will collect here. All income you will add. Okay. Then next is, you will deduct set off or carry forward of losses. Okay. What is set off or carry forward of losses? You might have loss in any one of these heads. Profit on some of these heads. You will get a chance to set off your loss from the profit. Okay. This is also a chapter which deals with all the rules of set off and carry forward of losses. Okay. Right. So we will be doing that after your heads of income, of course. Okay. So after setting off, you will get gross total income. From this, you get deductions in the section 80C to 80U. Okay. So deduct, you will deduct all these deductions and then you will get the final taxable income. Okay. So tax rate will be applied on this income. Right. So this is, is your total, total income or tax and income? This is, see, your total income and your taxable income is one and the same thing. Okay. Gross income is different. Yeah. Okay. So here, when you just add all of this, this becomes your gross income. Yes. When you give all deductions, set off, carry forward, all that, in the end, what you get is called as total income or you can call it as taxable income also. Okay. So this is how your income is taxed. Next thing, what you're going to study is what rounding off of total income which is section 288 capital A and similar 
similar provision is rounding off of tax 288B. So in rounding off, what you have to do is just see here, if your total income here is 51465, last digit is 5 or more, okay, then just convert it into 70. So 65 will get converted to 70. Okay, 65 gets converted to 70. So last digit is 5 or more, convert it to 10. Okay, so you are converting into 10 means automatically the 10th place will increase by 1. Okay, but if it is less than 5, for example here, even if it is 51464.85, so it's last digit is what? 4.85, still less than 5, correct? So if it is less than 5, pick it off. So this will become 51,460. Okay. This is the basic rule. That's all. 5 or more than 5, convert it into next 10. Less than 5, just take it off. Don't consider it. Okay. Now, once you get, once you have round off, rounded off, you will get your income. Okay. You will apply tax rate on that income. When you apply tax rate on that income, and add whatever surcharge says and all that, we will see. Okay. The net income can again be in odd number. Right? If you are applying tax rate, you have rounded it off here. That's fine. But if I apply some tax rate here, again, I can get answer in uh, answer which is not in tens, right? which doesn't have zero as the last place. Right? So that's why after calculating tax, you have to round it off once more. Same, use the same basis. After getting taxable income, if your taxable income is, sorry, if your tax, the tax which you have calculated on this income, on this income, okay, the tax is coming as, let's say, uh, let's say 10,265, 2265. Okay. So you will convert it into what? This is your tax. The tax is coming to 270. 70. And if it is 64, then it will be 60. 60. Then 60. Okay. So this is how you round off. Okay. And these sections are important. So you should remember 288 capital A and 288 capital B. Okay. So when you round off, you'll have to write rounding off as per section 288. Capital A or B, whatever you are rounding off. Right? Then, next part which we are going to talk about is capital versus revenue. Okay? So, capital income and revenue income, there are two kinds of income. So, revenue income is of, of the nature of profit. So what about capital income? Capital income is something which you are received for many years. Okay, so it is not a revenue profit. Okay, so that's called as capital. So, for example, if you have sold any capital asset, sold any capital asset, and whatever profit you are getting, that is called as capital profit. Okay, so profit wise, that is capital profit. If you are investing any capital, so you are investing the money to earn profit. So you are investing this money. Based on this investment, you are getting profit every year. Okay. So this investment is not meant to. Uh, so it's not meant for you to withdraw from it every month for your expenses. Okay. So this is called as capital investment. The profit is revenue. Okay. So now, so capital versus revenue. Here, what you have to see is. Capital receipt is exempted unless specifically provided. Okay. So any capital receipt okay. that will be by default exempted. Okay. So unless there is some information appended to that capital receipt, which is making you tax it. For example, if there is a capital receipt, okay, you have you have a capital receipt of 50 lakhs from a house, okay. 
that sold it, sold your house, it is capital receipt. You will not tax it unless you have information that on selling this, you have made a profit. If you have made a profit, that will be taxed as capital gains. Okay. So by default, any capital receipt, that is, if you have invested money of 20 lakhs, and then you are withdrawing this money of 20 lakhs, and this 20 lakhs will not be taxable. This is called as capital receipt, which doesn't have profit element. Capital receipt is exempted unless you have specific provision some part is to be taxed. Okay. And revenue receipt is the other way around. You will tax it unless you have information that it is exempt. Okay. All your uh, all your heads of income, they deal with revenue receipt except capital gains. Okay. Capital gains deals with capital receipts, profit on capital receipts. Okay. Revenue receipts, all other heads. Fine. Okay. Then receipt in lump sum or in installments. Okay. So it is same treatment. Okay. Now here, if I get income of okay in any year, I'm getting income of fifty crores. Is it capital receipt or revenue receipt? Crores. What do you think? Okay, answer is by bank magnitude, you cannot pay. So there are many big companies who are dealing with crores and millions and billions. Okay. If their PL shows a profit of say 100 billion, then 100 billion is a re revenue receipt, right? It's a profit. You will tax it in the PGBP, right? So the magnitude of income doesn't tell anything. Okay. You can have a small capital asset which you are selling. Okay. You have sold a small capital asset, say worth 5,000. Okay. And so th this will be your capital income. Whatever when you sell this and you are getting it, getting say 5,500. This is a capital receipt. Okay. So why it was a capital receipt? Because the subject matter which you sold, okay, that was capital. Capital nature, of capital nature. So here the subject matter is of revenue nature, then it will be revenue. So it doesn't de uh, depend on magnitude. 5,000 or 50 crore, it doesn't depend on that. Okay. And you receive in lump sum or installments, your salary, you are receiving say 50,000 per month. Okay. That is also revenue. Your employer is paying your three month salary together. So 50, 50, 000, 12 fives are six, six lakhs into three, 18 lakh together is paying. It is salary for three years. Okay, still that is salary, still it will be revenue. Okay. So it is the nature which is important. Magnitude is not relevant. And whether you are receiving voluntarily or under legal obligation, yes, it's not a problem. Okay. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, that I have, uh, say I am a businessman. Okay, I am. I have to pay you five lakhs income. Okay, for example, let's say you have to pay me five lakhs because of some work which I have done for you. So that five lakhs is my revenue income, PGPP income, profit and gains of business or profession. Correct. So, but if you are not paying me, okay, I have put a case in in a court of law. And then because of that case, you have paid me. In both these cases, those 5 lakhs is going to be my income only, correct? Voluntarily or under legal obligation, there is no difference, okay? Right. Then, purpose of keeping an article. This is also very important, okay? So, if you are keeping a 
painting. Okay. You have bought a painting, let's say, for 5 lakhs of some famous artist and you are keeping it. Okay. So you are, you have not bought to sell it. Okay. So you are keeping it as a capital asset. Okay. You are keeping, your purpose is not, you are not dealing in it. You are not buying and selling paint. Okay. So whenever you sell it, let us say after five years and all, whatever income you will get, it will be capital gains. Whatever income, of course, over the cost, whatever you are getting, that will be capital gains. But if your business itself is buying and selling paintings, if I am a dealer of paintings, okay, and now so I am selling a painting of 5 lakhs okay, for 7 lakhs. So this 2 lakhs will be PGBP income. Whereas if this person sells, it will be capital gains income. Understood? Okay, stop me if you have not understood anything. Okay. Expenses. For expenses, same treatment as income. Okay. So expenses are not treated differently. Whatever you have studied for income, same principle is for expenses. Okay. Expenses, same treatment as income. Right? Because see, uh, both are revenue, right? This is debit side of PL, that is credit side of so All principles of treatment will remain the same. Okay. So now, some other points. Acquiring asset or advantage of enduring nature. So you are buying an asset to be used for many years. It's always a capital investment. Right? And then capital assets belonging to third parties, use is of revenue nature, then revenue expenditure. For example, I have bought a house for 50 lakhs. Okay. It's a capital investment for me. You have taken that house on rent from me. Okay. So that monthly rent which you are paying, that is income from house property for you, which is revenue nature. Right? So, if you are using capital asset belonging to third parties, then and your use is of revenue nature, then revenue expenditure. Okay. Right? Then profit earning process is revenue expenditure. Profit earning process means in the course of business. Anything you are doing in the course of business. Okay. As a part of a profit earning process, that will be revenue expenditure. Okay. So object of the transaction. Okay. So object of the transaction is also important to see whether it is capital or revenue. Okay. So you bought that painting for safekeeping. When you sell it, it is capital. If you are a dealer and you are selling painting, it is revenue. Right. Next is fixed capital versus circulating capital. Fixed capi capital, best example is your building. Once you invest in building, it will the investment you mentioned in there. Okay. Circulating capital is you have bought stock in trade and you are going to sell stock in trade for profit. So initially you will buy stock in trade out of your capital only. Right? You bought stock in trade. Okay. And then you will sell stock in trade, whatever money you will get. Okay, then so it will get added back to your capital, whatever money you will get. So that is called a circulating capital. Part of capital gets converted into something, gets sold or processed in business, it's, it comes back to your business. Okay. Okay. So there are these are two things fixed and circulating capital. Okay. So capital is capital. It's just a differentiation that's showing you. Okay. Then so then expenditure on removing restriction is revenue expenditure. Okay, now these two things I would like to tell you. One is removing restriction, and another one is here. Expenses for creating, curing, or completing the title is capital 
expenditure. Okay. So, so two things. One is creating, curing, or completing title. One is removing restriction. Okay. So, say if you have bought a house. You have bought a house. Okay. Unless you get it registered, so your title will not be complete. Okay. So this is expenditure for completing the title. You have whatever you have to do to complete the title. Okay. So this is treated as part of capital expenditure. Registration and all. Whatever you are paying. Okay. Sometimes what happens? You have bought a house. Okay. Then you came to know that someone else has kept it under mortgage. Okay. Mortgage means girvi rakna. What we call this. Okay. Earlier you did not know, but now you, you came to know that it's under mortgage. So unless you free up the mortgage, mortgage you will not get a good title, clear title. Say the mortgage is of 5 lakhs. You will have to pay this 5 lakhs and free, free it up, correct? So this 5 lakh is also capital. Because unless you pay it, you are not getting a title. Any expenditure you are making before getting the title is capital expenditure. Okay? So which is why? Expenditure incurred for creating, curing, or completing title. Okay. Creating is when you're buying the house. Okay. Curing is same the mortgage example which I did. Completing the title is let's say registration. Okay. All these things are capital expenditure. Okay. In short, if you have to identify, just see. Whether the title is already complete or title is getting completed only after doing these things. The title is getting completed after doing a certain thing that is capital expenditure. If you are doing something which is after you already have completed the title, after that if you are doing something, it is revenue. That is this. Expenditure on removing restriction. That is revenue expenditure. So you have bought house, you have got a clear title. Okay. Everything is there. and But then, when you are starting business, you are seeing that, you know, there are some hawkers or some vendors who are there outside in the other side of the room. Because of them, your business is not running properly. Okay. So now you are giving them some money to move to another piece for your business. Okay. So you are removing some restriction. You have your title already, correct? Right? Payment is for removing restrictions, so it is revenue. Okay. Right. So, this is an important thing. You will be given some examples and you will have to identify whether it is capital or revenue. If what I have explained you here, if that point is clear, you will never go wrong in this. Okay. Payment made to a rival dealer to ward off competition. Okay. This is capital expenditure. Now, this uh, this part, payment made to a rival dealer to ward off competition. See this example. Okay. This is little different than the example which I gave. Removing restriction. Okay. Just one moment. I'll just add my charger. Okay, so now this is this is a small restriction which we have removed. Now this is payment made to a rival dealer. Okay, these are all court cases actually. All these numbers what you are saying now, these have been de decided mostly by the Supreme Court in various instances. So payment made to a rival dealer. So ye, say, I am Reynolds. Okay, I run Reynolds. I sell Reynolds pen in an area. Okay. And my profit is 50 lakhs in a year. Let's assume. Okay. So now Rotomac pen company is coming in the same area. Okay. So if Rotomac comes in the same area, 
my annual i know that my annual profit will reduce from 50 to 30 lakhs okay so i tell rotomac okay and say this 20 lakhs will be earned by rotomac so I will get 30 lakhs, they will get what 20 lakhs if Rotomac comes. Otherwise, I am earning all full 50 lakhs. Okay. So I have made the made an agreement with Rotomac. Okay. Saying that okay, you don't come here. I will give you for the next five years. Okay, 10 lakh rupees. 10 lakh or 5 lakh letters. Okay, what more it is? Okay, I am giving you 5 lakhs for the next 5 years. Okay, total of 25 lakhs. So, Rotomac will think, okay, like if I come, okay, I'll have to establish all machineries, factory, and then I'll get 40 lakhs. He's, as it is giving me 50 lakhs, I'll use the same machinery, go somewhere else, and there I can earn this 20 lakhs. And I'm getting 5 lakhs also. So, so it will go, correct? And for me, what will happen? I am giving 5 lakhs instead of 30 lakhs. Now I am earning 35 lakhs. Right? So these are kind of uh, in business competition, all these things happen in reality. So, so now this payment which you have given, okay. So this is for your source of income. Okay. So by this, okay, by paying him 5 lakhs, okay, what you have done is you have protected your source of income, okay, which is why this was deemed to be capital expenditure when they call. Okay. So this is what is your payment to a rival dealer to order of competition. So if it comes under this point, he's making some payment to a rival dealer to board of competition, then that will be capital expenditure. If you are making a payment to remove some restriction, there is some restriction. Okay, the way you are operating. Okay, and if it comes within the category of removing a restriction, that will be revenue expenditure. Fine. Then expenditure for ensuring the regular supply of raw material, even for many years, is revenue. So, in your in your field of operation you need regular supply of raw material because the factory has to run continuously. So made a five-year agreement with someone, a company, to supply raw materials. Okay. And you're paying them for five years. Okay. So although you have paid for five years, it is for raw material. Raw material is always on the debit side of the PNL. It's a revenue item. Okay. So this expenditure is revenue. Think that way, whether it is you know, just first of all, see whether it is an item of PNL. If it's an item of PNL, it will be revenue. Okay. For capital, there are only certain things you have to worry. That is, one is creating, curing, or completing title, and one is payment to rival dealer to order of competition. Okay. These are the two things you have to remember as capital. That's it. Rest are revenue. Okay. Now, goodwill is capital. Okay. When you are acquiring goodwill, goodwill is always a capitalism. In no instance, goodwill is treated as revenue. Okay. Right. And then, if you are protecting something, as I said, protecting your title, that is, you will protect it after you have received the title. That will be revenue expenditure. Okay. This is, uh, I'll just tell you what this illustration 2 is, and then we'll go for a quick summary in Hindi. Okay. So this in this agreement, sorry, in this uh, illustration, what has happened is there was a cement manufacturing company, okay, Birla Cement Manufacturing Company. It made an agreement with another company for purchase of machinery. But it said that you, you have to give me, supply the machinery within this time. If you don't supply it within this time, then I will have to stop my work that will result in loss. Okay, so if you do not supply within this time, then you have to give me 5% of the machinery value for the for my loss. So that's the penalty basically. Penalty clause was 
if they did not supply in time, suppose 100 rupees is the cost of machinery. If they did not supply in time that machinery, in 5% of 100, 5 rupees was the compensation. Okay. So, so this compensation was to be given. In the end, that company could not supply it in time and the compensation came up to 8.5 lakhs. Okay. Question was whether it is capital or revenue expenditure. That was treated by the Supreme Court. Okay. So Supreme Court treated it as a capital expenditure. Reason was before the machinery started production. Okay. This compensation was payable even before the machinery started production. Okay. It was pre-production. So anything which is pre-production is deemed as capital, which is why Supreme Court deemed it to be capital Okay. Now we will just give a small Gindi summary. Okay. Okay. So income से हमने start किया था कि income किस किस को हम कहते हैं ठीक है so ये सब देखे थे हमने cash या kind में हो सकता है income okay और uh, PGBP और other sources जो कि number three और number five है मैंने बताया था ठीक है one two three four five में three is PGBP five is capital gains ठीक है ये दोनों में method of accounting जो ऐसे से follow कर रहे हैं वो आपको देखना पड़ता है ओके okay? और बाकी तीनों में आपको देखने की जरूरत नहीं है ओके इनकम रियल इनकम होना चाहिए नोशनल इनकम टैक्स नहीं होती ओके राइट सो रेवेन्यू रिसीट एग्जेम्प्ट नहीं होता जब तक के स्पेसिफिकली प्रोवाइडेड हो कैपिटल रिसीट टैक्स नहीं होता okay? जब तक के कंट्ररी इज प्रोवाइडेड ओके सो लॉस इज आल्सो इनकम इज अ पार्ट ऑफ इनकम इसलिए इनकम के साथ सेट ऑफ करते हैं हम लोग कभी भी ठीक है अगर डिस्प्यूट है टाइटल ऑफ इनकम में तो यू विल नॉट विदहोल्ड द इनकम जिसको मिल रहा है इनकम उससे गवर्नमेंट टैक्स लेगी ओके चलिए लीगल और इलीगल इनकम सेम है ठीक है इनके लिए for income tax department, no difference between legal and illegal income. ठीक है? और एक income एक ही बार tax होता है. ठीक है? चलिए. फिर मैंने बताया था mutual activity क्या होती है? ठीक है? आप हम पैसे भी डाल रहे हैं. जो पैसे डाल दिए हैं उसको use कर रहे हैं. उसका मुनाफा बाहर नहीं निकाल रहे हैं. Okay? उसको बोलते हैं mutual activity. क्योंकि जब आप profit ही बाहर नहीं निकाल रहे हो, तो tax नहीं लगे इसके तीन exceptions है मैंने बताया one is specific services to its members यानि मिले हैं आप लोग relaxation इसके लिए वहाँ पे कोई professional dealing कर लिया आपने दूसरा कुछ that will be taxable okay और mutual insurance company का insurance business even mutual भी है तो भी taxable okay because of nature of that business insurance business में जो आपने अगर नहीं दिए insurance के पैसे तो पैसे आपके बच नहीं okay then Profit and gains of business of banking carried on by cooperative society with members. A business of banking, banking business by cooperative society, may be mutual activity. Okay. This way, banking business may be nature of business is such that interest to interest income. So, this is taxable. Okay. Then, in money, the housewife log. बचाते हैं पैसे ठीक है तो वो उसको टैक्सेबल नहीं किया जाता लेकिन उससे अगर कुछ घर या कुछ एसेट खरीद लिए और इनकम आ रहा है तो वो इनकम माना जाएगा ठीक है अवार्ड जो है दो हेड में तो आपका अवार्ड मिलता नहीं है कैपिटल गेंस में और हाउस प्रॉपर्टी बाकी तीनों में मिल सकता है बिजनेस अवार्ड इज इनकम बाकी दोनों का जो जो उस हेड में हम पढ़ेंगे उस प्रोविजन के अनुसार हम देखेंगे टैक्सेबल है कि नहीं लेकिन जो आपको जो सर्टिफिकेट मिलते हैं या ऐसा कोई कोई ये मिलता है ना कोई शील्ड मिलता है वो सब हिस्टिमोनियल बोलते हैं ठीक है वो टैक्सेबल नहीं है ठीक है चलिए फिर एम्बेजलमेंट 
इनकम है ठीक है गलत तरीकों से आपने अगर पैसे उड़ाया और आपको फायदा मिला है आपके पैसे है ना मिल गए आपको पैसे तो इनकम ठीक है कंटिजेंट इनकम है ना जो मिल सकता है कल को वो वैसे इनकम पे टैक्स नहीं लगता ठीक है सब्सिडी टैक्सेबल होता है कि सब्सिडी आपका इनकम है वो आपका कॉस्ट है कॉस्ट के पैसे आपको मिल जा रहे हैं इट इज लाइक सेल्स फॉर यू कॉस्ट के पैसे मिल रहे हैं मतलब ठीक है इसीलिए वो टैक्सेबल होता है ठीक है एक्चुअल कॉस्ट के लिए जो पैसे डालते हैं सॉरी एक्चुअल कॉस्ट बेसिस जहाँ यूज होता है देर इट इज नॉट इनकम ठीक है इस पर ज्यादा नहीं जाएंगे अभी वो जब कैपिटल गेंस करेंगे तब तो आपको समझेगा ठीक है तो पहला चैप्टर है अभी ये सिर्फ बेसिक्स है हेड्स ऑफ इनकम करने के बाद इस चैप्टर का बाद में आपको और ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंस पता चलेगा या इसमें क्या लिखा है वो ज्यादा समझ में आएगा ठीक है चलिए हेड्स और सोर्सेज ऑफ इनकम तो आपको मालूम है ठीक है एक हेड के अंदर कई सोर्स हो सकते हैं राइट एंड ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम कैसे कैलकुलेट होता है आप सारे हेड्स ऑफ इनकम को जोड़ देंगे इसमें फिर किसी एक हेड में अगर लॉस है तो दूसरे हेड के प्रॉफिट के साथ आप सेट ऑफ कर सकते हैं या विद इन हेड के अंदर भी लॉस है तो आप सेट ऑफ कर सकते हैं उसके पूरे सेट ऑफ के रूल्स हमारा एक चैप्टर ही अलग सेट ऑफ एंड कैरी फॉर्वर्ड ऑफ लॉसेज वहां देखेंगे आप ठीक है ठीक है तो ये टोटल जो इनकम है इसके बाद सेट ऑफ करेंगे तो यू गेट ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम डिडक्शन अंडर सेक्शन एट्टी सी टू एट्टी यू ठीक है इसको एट्टी सी टू एट्टी यू को और, और एक नाम है चैप्टर सिक्स ए बोलते हैं इसको ठीक है डिडक्शन अंडर चैप्टर सिक्स ए सिक्स ए ठीक है मतलब ये एट्टी सी टू एट्टी यू तो ये डिडक्ट करेंगे तो यू विल गेट योर टोटल इनकम नेट इनकम और टैक्सेबल इनकम कुछ भी बोल सकते हो ठीक है फिर राउंडिंग ऑफ का मैंने बताया इनकम और टैक्स दोनों का लास्ट डिजिट अगर फाइव है तो टेन बना देंगे लास्ट डिजिट फाइव से कम है तो उसको उड़ा देंगे ठीक है दोनों इनकम और टैक्स में ये करना है ओके देन कैपिटल वर्सेस रेवेन्यू ठीक है तो ये तो हमने देख लिए थे ये पार्ट ओके कैपिटल इनकम इज डेल्ट अंडर कैपिटल गेन्स बाकी चार हेड में रेवेन्यू की बात हम करते हैं ठीक है देन नेक्स्ट इज लमसम या इंस्टॉलमेंट जैसे भी मिले हैं कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता नेचर नहीं बदलता उससे ओके और मैग्नीट्यूड जैसे मैंने बोला था मैग्नीट्यूड जो है ओके उस मैग्नीट्यूड मैंने पूछा था आपको पचास करोड़ का इनकम है ये कैपिटल है कि रेवेन्यू मैग्नीट्यूड देख के नहीं बता सकते कौन सा ट्रांजैक्शन हुआ है वो देख के ही हम बता सकते हैं ठीक है चलिए वॉलेंटरीली और लीगल ऑब्लिगेशन आपको किसी ने ने आप दे दिया है या आपको केस डाल के वसूलना पड़ा है कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता पैसे मिले हैं तो मिले हैं ठीक है तो चलिए नेक्स्ट इज पर्पस ऑफ कीपिंग एन आर्टिकल ठीक है यानी आपने वो आर्टिकल जो है बेचने के लिए खरीदे हैं या आपने रखने के लिए खरीदे इससे फर्क पड़ता है कि वो कैपिटल रिसीट रहेगा कि रेवेन्यू ठीक है एक्सपेंसेस का ट्रीटमेंट सेम एज इनकम ठीक है एक्सपेंसेस सेम एज इनकम ठीक है ये क्रेडिट साइड है या डेबिट साइड है तो उसका ट्रीटमेंट कैसे करना है वो चेंज नहीं होता ठीक है चलिए फिर हमने ये लास्ट में ये देखे थे ये सारे पॉइंट्स कि आपने ऐसा कब कैपिटल होते हैं कब रेवेन्यू होते हैं इफ यू आर एक्वायरिंग एसेट ऑफ एन एंडरिंग नेचर है बहुत दिन यूज करने के लिए आप खरीद रहे हैं कुछ वो तो कैपिटल होगा ठीक है थर्ड पार्टी के एसेट्स को आपने रेंट में लिए तो रेवेन्यू ठीक है प्रॉफिट अर्निंग प्रोसेस में यूज हो रहा है तो रेवेन्यू ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन जैसे आपने रखने के लिए लिए हैं कि बेचने के लिए सर्कुलेटिंग कैपिटल दोनों भी कैपिटल है ठीक है चलिए ठीक है तो देन एक्सपेंडिचर ऑन रिमूविंग रेस्ट्रिक्शन ओके तो यहाँ पे दो चीजें एक साथ मैंने बताया था आपको अगर रेस्ट्रिक्शन uh, रिमूव करने के लिए आप कर रहे हैं तो वो रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर कोई चीज है जिससे आपको तकलीफ हो रही है जैसे 
कोई आने जाने का रास्ता में कोई ब्लॉक कर रहे हैं कुछ हॉकर्स कुछ उनको आपने मूव करा दिया थोड़ा ठीक है ताकि आपके पास उसका रास्ता खुल सके वो रेवेन्यू है लेकिन आप किसी को आ, किसी डीलर को आपने पांच साल तीन साल प्राइवेट डीलर को अपने पैसे दिए ताकि वो उस एरिया में ऑपरेट न करे ठीक है ओके तो उसको कैपिटल माना जाएगा राइट तो ये सब चीजें हैं सप्लाई ऑफ रॉ मटेरियल के लिए अपने कई सालों का भी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट आएंगे तो रॉ मटेरियल है तो पी एन एल डेबिट का आइटम तो इट विल बी रेवेन्यू ठीक है और यहाँ पे एक्विजिशन ऑफ गुडविल गुडविल हमेशा ही कैपिटल एसेट होता है इसका इसका कोई ऐसा कुछ नहीं होता कि आ, कभी ऐसा हो तो कैपिटल ऐसा हो तो रेवेन्यू नहीं ये हमेशा कैपिटल एसेट रहता है इन टेंजिबल एसेट वो आगे देखेंगे यहाँ पे एक्सपेंसेस फॉर क्रिएटिंग क्यूरिंग और कंप्लीटिंग टाइटल रजिस्ट्रेशन एक्सपेंस खरीदने का एक्सपेंस ठीक है कुछ मॉडगेज या कुछ प्रॉब्लम है उसमें ठीक है उसके पीछे एक्सपेंस एलिटिगेशन था पहले से उसका एक्सपेंस यानी आपका एक्स जो एसेट आपके नाम से पूरा होने से पहले जो भी एक्सपेंस कर रहा हो सब कैपिटल ठीक है प्रोटेक्टिंग के लिए रेवेन्यू चलिए तो इसके बाद मैंने आपको ये केस लॉ बताया था ठीक है जिसमें यहाँ पे उन्होंने क्या किए थे मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कंपनी था इनका ठीक है इन्होंने एक मशीनरी मंगाया थी लेकिन बोले कि अगर मशीनरी तुमने टाइम पे नहीं दिए तो पांच परसेंट पेनल्टी लगेगी टाइम पे नहीं मिली मशीनरी तो एट पॉइंट फाइव एक्स पेनल्टी मिल गई ठीक तो अब वो कैपिटल होगा कि रेवेन्यू होगा वो था क्वेश्चन ओके तो कैपिटल माना गया क्योंकि वो मशीनरी इन प्रोडक्शन चालू रिज्यूम नहीं की ना प्रोडक्शन से पहले जब आपको कॉम्पेंसेशन मिल रहा है दैट विल बी कैपिटल ठीक है समझ में आ गया चलिए आगे वाला पॉइंट एक ब्रेक लेंगे ठीक है तो इलेवन सेवनटीन हो रहा है अभी मैं आपको दो पंद्रह मिनट के ब्रेक दूंगा फोर आवर का क्लास है तो आप आ सकते हैं थर्टी टू इलेवन थर्टी टू पंद्रह मिनट का ब्रेक ओके थर्टी थ्री बोलिए चलिए ओके इलेवन थर्टी थ्री एम ओके एक और फिफ्टीन मिनट्स का ब्रेक दूंगा बाद में कैंडी में ओके इलेवन थर्टी थ्री को आप आइए वापस अभी ब्रेक है इलेवन थर्टी थ्री तक ओके इलेवन थर्टी थ्री ले
Okay, so let's continue. Right, so next part is tax planning, tax evasion, tax avoidance, and there's one more thing, that's tax management, okay? So tax planning, tax evasion, tax avoidance, and tax management. There are four terms which you should know. The tax planning is what we all do normally. Okay, we use certain investments and some PF investment, okay, and all, and we get some deductions and reduce our tax, right? That is called as tax planning. So you're using legal ways which are provided by the law Okay, and reducing your tax. So that is your tax planning. Okay. It's the way to reduce tax liability by taking full advantages provided in the act through exemptions, deductions, rebates, and relief. Okay, whatever is legally provided in the income tax act, you are using that and getting deductions. So that is tax planning, legal way. Next is tax evasion and tax avoidance. Okay. So evasion is the illegal way, okay? So you are you have some income, but you have concealed it. You're not showing it. Or you are showing more expense than necessary, thereby reducing your profits, okay? That is called as evasion, right? So it is illeg illegal because you are hiding something. Now tax avoidance is what you have to understand, okay? It is between planning and evasion. Tax avoidance. Okay. Here, okay, the SSC legally takes advantage of loopholes in the act. Okay. So here what happens? SSC legally takes advantages of loopholes in the act. Okay. So see, so you know now in law there are many complex sentences. Okay. It is uh, it's very, very long. So sometimes certain things can be interpreted in two ways. When a law can be interpreted in two ways, that's when it goes to the courts for interpretation. You know what is the right interpretation of this. Okay. So if you are knowledgeable enough, you, you know that, okay, if I do this, now this sentence doesn't clearly say this. Okay. So even if I do something wrong, they will not be able to catch me. Okay, if you know that and you do that, that means you know, you know what is the purpose of the legislature, but you also know that what has been written. Okay, and what has been written cannot catch you. You're getting it. So actually, going by the letter of the law, you are not wrong. So nobody can put you behind bars for that. Okay. You have just taken advantage of some loophole in the law. So what happens is after someone does this, then amendments come to fill up that error or that loophole. Okay, so that is tax avoidance. So now what, is it right or wrong? Okay, see, uh, legally it is not wrong but because you have not circumvented the law at all. So legally it is not wrong, right? But ethically, it is wrong because you know that what you are doing was not the intention of the lawmakers. You know that. But you also know that what is written doesn't bring out that meaning, which is why you are using that. So you know that what you are doing is wrong and you do it. So that's why morally or ethically, it is not correct. Okay. But can you be jailed for that? No. Okay. Legally, it is not a mistake. So that is called as tax avoidance. Okay. So there are two thoughts about tax avoidance. In India, it is perfectly legal. Okay. And Supreme Court has also uh, supported it because as per the letter of the law is concerned, as far as the letter of law is concerned, it's not wrong. You have followed the law. Okay. You have followed the law. How can you, how can you be acted upon? Right. Okay, so which is why it is legal. But then after that, later on, it is filled. The, the error which is there is filled up later. 
it was that was not the intention of the legislature so, but in some other countries some some thoughts are there where they say that it's not a legal way and it should be prohibited okay so some other thoughts are that it should be prohibited but no country uh, has provided any penal measurements uh, for that for your tax evasion okay tax avoidance sorry reason being it is not against your law book when it is not against your law how will you jail that person so but in india nothing is done even whatever benefit you have got out of tax avoidance you can get only after that an amendment is brought in so that in future people will not take advantage but some countries think that if anyone has done something like this they should not be allowed to take advantage of it at least don't give the benefit is what some countries think. for you all okay for you all or for us it is the indian position which is important it is legal but then amendments are brought to plug it understood so that is tax avoidance last thing is tax management Okay, so tax management is uh, something so when you all work for any tax department of, a, of an organization. What do you do? Okay, you, okay, you first consider the income tax and other calendars. That is, at what date you have to pay what tax, okay, GST returns and all that. Okay, when you have to pay and all that, so that you will have to first recognize, and then in action you have to pay in time. Okay, if any returns are to be filed, file returns in time. Okay, so all these things come under tax management. So it's a continuous process for an organization. Okay. So tax, as far as tax management is concerned, you are talking about both uh, direct and indirect taxes. Okay, the bigger organizations, it is a continuous process. It goes on every month. They have to do file some returns and all that, and then if there is any notice from the department, okay, then reply to it. All that, all these things, what you do regularly, that is tax management. Okay. These are the four main things which you should know. Okay, it's a popular question and is asked. Okay, the next is diversion and application of income. Okay, next part is diversion and application of income. So here, so what is what are the two things? Okay. Consider this, the middle part here, yeah, as income due and received. Okay. This is the income you received. Diversion of income is something when income is diverted before it is due and received. Okay. If income, so income is credited to you or it becomes due to you, even before that, if it is diverted, that is diversion of income. Okay. So that income never became payable, right? So which is why you don't have to pay tax on diversion of income. But it never got credited or due to your account. What's the point? That is diversion. Whereas application of income is you have got your income. After that, whatever payment you want to do, okay, pay children's fees, okay, go for recreation trips, right? And pay for groceries and whatever is your requirement, okay, go for movies, do whatever you want, buy, buy vehicles, car, whatever. This is everything is application of income. Whatever you do, whatever you spend after you have received your money, your salary or whatever money, okay, income. After that, whatever you do is application of income. Okay, so this application does not give you a right of deduction or anything. 
Okay, it is just spending out of your income. So this is the difference between diversion and application. You will get several examples of application. If you're diversion, you will get very less examples. Okay. So we will see one example here. Okay. So, so ABC are co-authors of a book. Publisher, total royalty was 6 lakhs. Publisher gave it to A. Okay. But all three, share of all three was 2 lakhs, 2 lakhs, 2 lakhs, 6 lakhs. So then A kept his 2 lakhs and he gave to B and C. Okay. But A got all 6 lakhs. Okay. But when he gave those 4 lakhs to the others, that became diversion of income. So he will never be taxed for that 4 lakhs. 4 lakhs. He will be taxed only for 4 lakhs. So this is, there is one minor difference in this is that the 6 lakhs got credited to his account. Okay. But in diversion, due to many laws and all, sometimes due to laws, a certain amount will directly be taken from your salary before it is credited. That comes under the pure definition of diversion. Okay, for which you need not pay tax. So here then, so here, this is why this is called as diversion of income. This is an example. Application is like all whatever you spend is all application. Okay. So now we will see our tax rates or assessment here 22, 23. Okay. Tax rates for assessment year 22, sorry, uh, 23, 24. Our assessment year is 23, 24. Previous year is 22, 23. Okay. So starting with this table is for other individual HUF, AOP, BOI, and HM. Okay. Can you name the seven persons? Seven types of persons. Can you name it? Individual sir, HAF firm, company, uh, AOP, POI, local authority, AJP. Very good. Okay, so these are the seven examples of persons okay individual HF, firm company in this firm and company are seen as pure business entities okay they will have different uh, tables okay taxation and then your individual HF, okay aop boi and agent these are all seen as flows okay so you'll have one table for this. Local authority is like municipality and all, correct? So they have income of an entire area. So their income is very large, okay, for local authorities compared to an individual company or firm. Okay, so there is a separate table for local authority. Okay, so you'll have three tables actually based on the types of persons. So let's see. Uh, in case of other individual, AOP, HUF, sorry, HUF, AOP, BI, HAP. Now, okay, other individual means an individual who is not a senior citizen and he is resident of India. Okay, other individual means resident individual. Okay, and he is less than 60 years of age. Senior citizen is defined as someone who is 60 years of age. Okay. So now we are previous year is 20, 22, 23. Assessment year is 2023, 20, 24. Okay. So this 60 years of age, when will I count? Till when can a person become reach 60 years of age? Now, for our assessment year, till when 
correct because it's a full year this previous year assessment year both together are 24 years correct so at which point of time you will consider that 60 years of age without googling You consider it at the last day of the previous year, okay? Last day of the previous year. Till the last day of the previous year, you'll consider his age. If on the last day of the previous year, his birthday is on 31st March 2023, then he's a senior citizen for us. Okay, but if his birthday is on, birthday is on 1st April 24. Okay, first day of the assessment year. Then he is not a previous, then he is not a senior citizen. Okay, till 31st March 2023, he should be 60 years of age. Understood? So, here for other individual, HUF, AOP, BUI, HAP, up to 25 lakhs is nil. Okay, about 25, two points, sorry, up to 2.5 lakhs is nil. About 2.5 lakhs up to 5 lakhs is 5%. Okay. So if you calculate this tax, 5 lakhs minus 2.5, which is 2.5 lakhs into 5%, you will get 12,500. Okay. Above 5 lakhs up to 50 lakhs or 10 lakhs. This is 20%. Okay. Calculate for 10 lakhs minus 5 lakhs, which is 5 lakhs into 20%, you will get 1 lakh. Okay. Above 10 lakhs is 30%. So till 10 lakhs, it's good to remember that for this up to 5 lakhs, the tax is 12,500. Okay, and above and this till 10 lakhs, above 5 lakhs up to 10 lakhs is 1 lakh. Total, if you want to see income up to 10 lakhs, what is the tax is? 1 lakh 12,500. So it's good to remember, like you'll be able to solve some problems quickly. Okay, you should remember this much tax directly okay then next is super senior citizen and senior citizen okay first so this is for individual okay here we said other individual individual hf aop bui ajp okay so other individual was that person who was not a senior citizen and resident. Okay. So here we will talk about senior citizen and super senior. Senior is was completed 60 years at any time during the previous year. So for him, just up to 3 lakhs is nil. Convert this 2.5 lakhs to 3 lakhs. That's all. The things remain the same. This will become 3 to 5. These two will remain same. Okay. This last two are same for all. 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs and 10 lakhs. Here also it is the same. Super senior. And here also it is the same. Okay. Only the first two lines will change. Up to 3 lakhs is nil for senior. 3 to 5 is 5 percent. And so super senior up to 5 is nil. These two are same. Okay. Right. So here there should be a resident individual. Okay. And one more thing is, so this 60 years which we are giving, okay, anyone who is a non-resident, okay, non-resident person who is 60 years of age, okay, he will not be put in this table, okay, he will be put in this table, okay, in that other individual, you will have all kinds of individual. Number one, okay. You will have resident individual. You will have non-residents also in it, okay. At the same time, any non-resident who are senior or super senior citizen, that will they will also come under this table, okay. Clear? Okay. So, ye, ye aapka tax table hai. Okay, yaha pe maine aapko bataya tha diversion. Yes, ye sabse pehle maine bataya tha aapko. Tax evasion, tax avoidance, ठीक है? ये सब कैसे क्या होता है? इसमें हमारा 
जो है आपका टैक्स प्लानिंग है ना जो हम लोग प्लानिंग करते हैं इन्वेस्टमेंट करते हैं थोड़ा करेक्ट उससे टैक्स बचता है वो सब टैक्स प्लानिंग है लीगल इवेजन यानी आप छुपा रहे हैं कुछ ठीक है और या तो आप एक्सपेंस ज्यादा दिखा रहे हैं या इनकम छुपा रहे हैं अवॉइडेंस का मतलब मैंने बताया कि जैसे लॉ में कुछ लूप होल देख के हम उसका फायदा उठा रहे हैं ठीक है तो हमारा इंटेंशन अच्छा नहीं है लेकिन लीगली वो इनकरेक्ट नहीं है ठीक है वो है अवॉइडेंस टैक्स मैनेजमेंट है कोई भी कंपनी का टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट होता है वहां पे वो लोग लो बैठ के वो रिटर्न्स भरते हैं ठीक है जीएसटी के इनकम टैक्स के नोटिस का आंसर करते हैं ठीक है ये सब चीजें जो काम होता है रेगुलर बेसिस टैक्स का वो आता है टैक्स मैनेजमेंट के अंदर ठीक है और फिर डाइवर्सन और एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इनकम मैंने बताया था आपको वो है इनकम ड्यू एंड रिसीव यह है इनकम ड्यू एंड रिसीव जो हमको मिला है इससे पहले ही कभी डाइवर्ट हो जाता है तो कोई लॉ ही कर सकता है उसको इसके पहले डाइवर्ट तो प्राइवेट पर्सन आपकी सैलरी पे अपना हक नहीं बता सकता ठीक है सो so, कोई लॉ ही आपको आपके सैलरी अकाउंट में क्रेडिट होने से पहले डाइवर्ट कर सकता है ठीक है तो वो होता है डाइवर्सन ऑफ इनकम तो वो उसके जितना डाइवर्ट हो गया इनकम उतना टैक्सेबल नहीं होता है क्योंकि आपको ड्यू ही नहीं हुआ ठीक है और एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इनकम जो खर्च हम करते हैं सैलरी मिलने के बाद वो सब एप्लीकेशन है ठीक है तो फिर अब हम आए ये टैक्स रेट्स में तीन रेट्स से हमने देखा कि कौन सात आपके पीपल है ठीक है सो इंडिविजुअल एच यू एफ एओपी बी ओ आई ओके फॉर्म कंपनी लोकल अथॉरिटी और एजेपी ठीक है सात है एओपी बी आई को एक मानते हो सेवन परसेंट आते हैं ये अदर इंडिविजुअल एच यू एफ एओपी बी आई एजेपी ठीक है नॉर्मली इंडिविजुअल एच यू एफ एओपी बी आई एजेपी के बहुत सारे टेबल्स एक साथ मिलेंगे आपको इनके फॉर्म और कंपनी के हमेशा अलग रहेंगे क्योंकि बिजनेस एंटिटीज है लोकल अथॉरिटी का भी अलग रहेगा क्योंकि मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ इनकम ज्यादा होता है ठीक है तो ये हो गया तो ये अदर अदर इनकम में क्या क्या आता है आपका रेजिडेंट इंडिविजुअल आते हैं ठीक है नॉन रेजिडेंट्स भी आ जाते हैं इसमें और सीनियर सिटीजन और नॉन रेजिडेंट जो है वो भी आ जाते हैं ठीक है चलिए तो ये है आपका टैक्स रेट अप टू टू पॉइंट फाइव लैक्स नील है टू पॉइंट फाइव टू फाइव लैक्स फाइव परसेंट है फाइव टू टेन फाइव लैक्स टू टेन लैक्स ट्वेंटी परसेंट है अबाउट टेन लैक्स थर्टी परसेंट है ये फाइव परसेंट ये वाला जो लाइन है इसका कैलकुलेट करोगे तो यू विल गेट ये दोनों लाइन जो है सीनियर सुपर सीनियर अदर इंडिविजुअल सब में सेम है लास्ट टू लैक्स ठीक है और यहाँ पे सुपर सीनियर में अप टू फाइव लैक्स नील रहेगा और जो अप टू फाइव लैक्स नील रहेगा ये तो सेम फाइव टू टेन लैक्स ट्वेंटी और ये थर्टी ठीक है ये हमारा ये है सुपर जो सीनियर है सिक्सटी सुपर सीनियर है एट्टी एट्टी है इसको सुपर सीनियर बोल ठीक है चलिए फिर आपका एक और चीज है जिसको बोलते हैं अल्टरनेटिव टैक्स रेजिम 115 बीएसी ये है सेक्शन 115 बीएसी ओके इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर दिस सेक्शन बिकॉज इट इज नोन मेनी टाइम्स नॉट नोन एज मेनी टाइम्स एज अल्टरनेटिव टैक्स रेजिम इट इज कॉल्ड एज इफ यू पे टैक्स अंडर 115 बीएसी इट्स नोन बाय दिस सेक्शन नेम सो यू शुड नो दिस सेक्शन ठीक है So 115 BAC. So in 115 BAC you don't get some deductions. Okay, what deductions you don't get? That I will not be able to tell you now. I will tell you later on after salaries is over. Okay, because there will be many things here which you will not understand. Some deductions and all which you are not getting after salaries we will be able to revisit here. Okay, so there are some deductions which you cannot take under this. okay but what is what is the benefit benefit is the table is 
more friendly it's tax stable okay and here it is applicable only for individual and hua okay not for other persons here you can see that see this is up to 250000 is nil same as earlier one and up to 5 lakhs is 5% so till here it is same as your normal other individual okay and then you have third one was always 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs correct just one slab for that here see 5 to 7.5 is only 10% and 7.5 lakhs to 10 lakhs is 15% okay so it is just growing by 5-5% for every two and a half weeks. Okay. So tax which you calculate through this table will always be lesser than the original table. Then 10 to 12.5 lakhs is 20%, 12.5 lakhs to 15 lakhs is 25%. Above 15%, then it comes back. Okay. But uh, the difference is that you will not get some deductions. You won't get certain deductions. You won't get rebate under section 87A. What is rebate? We will see shortly. Okay. So normally, okay, there is no hard and fast rule that if you have income up to this limit, then this is good. Above this, that is good. It's not like that. You'll have to calculate and see. But normally speaking, people with higher income bracket, okay, people whose income bracket is higher, let's say above 12 lakhs or so, for them, the older one is better. Okay, for such people, they invest a lot. Okay, so nor and normally for people who are less than 10 lakhs, okay, this becomes better. So, but it depends on what you have invested. In the end. Okay. So later on, not now, this will come much later after all heads of income are over. We will also do problems where we will do the comparison. Taking one problem, and we will see uh, calculation of tax as per old and as per new in comparison, which is okay. So this is called as new regime. Now rebate under section 87A. So now rebate is only for residential resident individual, okay? Not for HUFOs and other person. This rebate is only for resident individual. Okay. The rebate, what it says is, if your total income is up to 5 lakhs, no need to pay tax. Okay. So, you are getting rebate as lower of tax liability or 12,500. That is, up to 12,500, you need not pay tax. As here we had seen in the table that for 2.5 to 5 lakhs, it is 12,500 tax, correct? So you are getting rebate of 12,500. So because of rebate up to 5 lakhs, there is no income. Okay? It is rebate. For the current assessment year, this rebate has gone up from 5 lakhs to 7 lakhs. But like for our exam, it is this 5 lakhs. Okay? So now, chalo, so we will just do an example of computation of rebate under section 87A. Okay. So yaha pe, chali. Now, four cases are there for us. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Sorry, six. Uh, so it uh, we have got five cases actually. Okay, yeah, the five cases, eh? and then here, what are the lines which we have to see? SSC, residential status they have given, total income they have given, tax in the above they have given. Okay, and we have to calculate rebate in the section 87A. Okay, right, and just give the reason. And calculate tax after rebate. So what he has to pay after taking into consideration rebate. Okay. So the first thing, see, these are all individuals. Okay. Senior citizen is also an individual. Okay. Considering he is a so senior citizen is always an individual. He may be a resident, non-resident, but is an individual always. 
This is also individual. Okay, these four are individuals. What about the fifth one? He is a he is an HUF. Rebate is not applicable to HUF. Okay. Right. So, so what you have to consider is here. See, that's why the rebate is nil. Okay. Rebate is called name. Okay. We are talking about rebate. Yeah, this income is above less than 2,50,000. Okay, 2,50,000. Okay, so fine. So I'm back. Okay, you are all able to hear me, right? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Okay, and the power goes and comes back. So there is a delay actually, a lag. Okay, so. One moment. Okay, so here, so this is what we are talking about the rebate in the section 87A. Okay, so this is what they have given, right? And so, so here, this is an HUF, so no rebate. Okay, so here at this point of time, you only have, don't worry about the tax calculation at this stage, okay, because I have not uh, taken you through the tax rates and all. Okay, anyway. We'll get to the tax calculation part much later. So here, because it is an HUF, rebate is nil. Okay, understood. First one. Now, second one is rebate under section 87 is only for a resident individual. Correct. So see here, it's applicable only for to a resident individual, right? So non-residents. will not get benefit of rebate. So here you can see second one is non-resident, okay? So rebate will be nil, okay? Whatever tax is there, he will have to pay, okay? I'm not taking you to the computation of tax at this stage, okay? We have not reached that. Just for demonstrating rebate. These three are remaining. Now in these three, here for these two, you can see income Income has become above five lakhs, correct? Income has gone above five lakhs. Total income. Okay. Total income, net income, everything is the same. Taxable income. Okay. So this income is this. Okay. Uh, it's above 5 lakhs, right? So if it's above 5 lakhs, you will not get any rebate. So that's why it is nil. Yeah. Only 1% remains is this individual. Okay. Total income is 4 lakh 90,000. Okay. So what will be the tax? Is a resident individual, that is, other individual. So up to 2,50,000 will be nil. Next 2,40,000 will be 5%. Okay. Will be 12,000. Right. 12,000 is the tax and he's under total income is under 4,90,000. Right. So which is why tax is 12,000. Okay. So now he is is he will get entire rebate twelve thousand after twelve thousand five hundred he can get rebate so he'll get twelve thousand rebate okay and tax after rebate is nil okay sorry there's a bit of 
this problem is today. Okay, so now, so you have understood, okay, that's what this problem says. Imputation of rebate, right? The next part we're talking about is surcharge. Okay, so actually, okay, once you get to your net income, okay, or taxable income, Okay. Once you get here, you will have to apply tax percentage. Okay. Apply tax percentage. Okay. So what you will get, say, for example, total income, let us say, is. Um, let us say six lakhs. Okay, whatever you will apply tax percentage and say you got a tax of 20,000. Let's assume. Okay, so tax, and then what will be next? You will have to. So there is something called a surcharge. Okay, surcharge is calculated on tax, not on income. Okay, surcharge is not calculated on income, it is calculated on tax. Okay, remember this one. The surcharge will be calculated on tax, and then you will get what tax plus surcharge here. Yeah. Tax plus surcharge. Yes. So once you get tax plus surcharge, okay. So this is some figure we are getting tax plus surcharge. Here you have to add health and education says this called as HEC health and education says okay this percentage is four percent okay so that this four percent will be on this figure then you will get the final tax figure okay so now what is this surcharge okay that we are seeing the surcharge is applicable only if your income is very high. Okay. So this surcharge table is for individual HUF AOP BUI. Okay. Up to 50 lakhs is nil. So if your total income is up to 50 lakhs, okay, then your surcharge is nil. Fine. So that is up to 50 lakhs of total income. Your sir, you are not going to have any surcharge. It is basically for higher end SECs. Between 50 lakhs to 1 crore is 10%. Up to 50 lakhs is nil. Okay. Then between 50 lakhs to 1 crore. 10% surcharge and from 1 crore to 2 crore 15% surcharge okay and from 2 to 5 crore you have 25% okay and more than 5 crores is 37%. Right? And this is your surcharge table. So you all should be knowing the surcharge table. What are the values of surcharge table? What is the value of tax table? I ask you, okay? So you should know this. Like if I ask you, what is the surcharge for more than 2 crore up to 5 crores? So you should know it is 25%. Okay? So these are all your surcharge, surcharges, okay? Now, there is one thing which now at this stage will not make too much, too much of sense to you. 
there is a certain thing like if you have okay if your total income includes dividend income chargeable under 111 capital a and 112 capital a these are parts of capital gains okay there's these are three types of income under capital gains which come under 111 capital a and 112 capital a. okay okay it's basically uh, listed shares okay listed funds equity related funds and units of business trust these three things come under this so i'm just parking it at this stage because these you will study in capital gains okay so this much detailing is not required in the first chapter for you so there are three kinds of income if the your income has these three incomes then your surcharge will be limited to 25 percent okay sorry uh, 15 percent okay then your surcharge will be limited to 15 percent if you have these three incomes okay that is this middle one it will not your surcharge will not go above this for these three incomes okay it's a rule for these three incomes only in short how you can remember this at, at this stage, how you will remember this? For dividend in certain capital gains, surcharge not to exceed 15%. Just remember this. One. Okay. This part you will understand later. Fine. And then health and education says applicable for all SSEs. It's 4% of tax liability after surcharge. Okay. HEC. Now we are coming to Something called as marginal relief. Okay, all this you have understood. This is next point. What you're going to talk about is marginal relief. Okay, it's available to all persons. So, what is marginal relief? Understand that first. Let's just go through this example and then you will understand what is marginal relief and why it is required. Okay, now example is compute tax liability of the SSC 52 years whose income is 1, 49 lakh 90 thousand, 50 lakh 10 thousand, 60 lakhs. Okay, so let's compute this case 1, case 2, case 3. This is case 1 is 49 lakh 90 thousand, case 2 is 50 lakh 10 thousand, case 3 is 60 lakhs. Okay, so let's compute the tax 2 lakh 50 thousand nil. Correct, next 2 lakh 50 thousand is 5 percent. It will be 12,500. We had seen that this 5 lakhs next will be 1 lakh. Correct? Tax will be 1 lakh at 20%. Now, balance income will be taxed at 30%. So, about 10 lakhs, how much is here? In 49 lakh 90,000. 49 lakh 90,000. About 10 lakhs. Thirteen lakh, thirty nine lakh ninety thousand, and tax will be thirty percent. Okay, so I am just mul uh, multiplying these two. This is tax eleven lakh ninety seven thousand. Okay, so so tax is here eleven lakh ninety seven thousand. Fine, add the three tax, you will get total tax here. Okay, similarly here these two also are same, and here. You just have to do 50 lakh 10,000 minus 10 lakhs. So when you are in tax, tax class, always have your calculators with you. Okay. Have a calculator, have a notebook, pen. So 50 lakhs 10,000 minus 10 lakhs is 40 lakh 10,000. If you multiply that by 30%, we'll get tax of 12 lakh 3,000. Okay, similarly for the last one. And just add all, you'll get the total tax. Okay, so rebate will not be applicable as income exceeds 5 lakhs. So rebate 87 is nil. So this is your liability, tax, tax liability. Okay. Now, 
After tax liability, you have to add surcharge. Okay. You have to add surcharge. If this is less than 50 lakhs income. You have to see income. 49 lakhs, 90,000. Okay. So 49 lakh 90,000 is less than 50 lakhs, correct? So rebate is not applicable. So it is zero. But in the second case, he has gone above 50 lakhs. He is between 50 lakhs and 1 crore. Okay. How much is the percentage of 50 lakhs to 1 crore? So Richard? Ten percent. Okay, so add so surcharge is always calculated on tax. So surcharge will be this into ten percent. So ten percent will just take off one zero. You will get the answer. This is one three one five five zero. Okay, right. And the next one, leave it. Okay, the next one is. Not uh, important for us okay, to understand marginal relief. So, here you can see what has happened. See, the income has gone from 49 lakh 90,000 to 50 lakh 10,000. Only 20,000 has increased. Okay, but see, surcharge has increased by 1 lakh 31,550. Income increased only by 20,000. Correct. So, don't you think it is unfair? His income itself is going up by only twenty thousand. Tax is going above income. Surcharge is taking his tax above the income level. So, it is unfair. Correct. So, that's why marginal relief is given. Okay. So for marginal relief, what is done is uh, okay. So, what to give relief? First, you have to compute. Here. So your threshold is 50 lakhs. Okay. After 50 lakhs, you have to pay surcharge, right? So calculate tax for threshold. This comes to 13 lakh 12,500. Okay. Should remember this. And okay. And of course, here there is no rebate. So this is your liability. And there will be no surcharge because it is 50 lakhs, right? It's not above 50 lakhs. So, tax and surcharge is 13, 12, 500. So, now you, what you have to do is, you just have to compare this and this. This is 50 lakhs and this is 50 lakhs. Sorry, this is 50 lakhs. This one, 13, 12, 500 is 50 lakhs. And this one, 14, 47, 0, 50 is 50 lakh, 10,000. Okay. The tax has increased by 10,000. Okay. So, what marginal relief says is, okay, so how much is income increasing? After 50 lakhs, it is increasing by 10,000. Okay. So, limit the tax to that 10,000. Let the tax not go above 10,000. Like here we saw it was going above 10,000. Correct. When you compare these two. Okay. Here also you can see if you compare these two, tax is going above 10,000. This thing limit the tax to 10,000. Okay. That's what is your marginal relief. Right. And that too, of that 10,000, okay, which is above 50 lakhs, 10,000, which is above 50 lakhs, we can divide it into two parts. Right. 10,000 here, which is above 50 lakhs. I can I divide it into two parts? Okay. One is because tax is about 10 lakhs. So 30% tax anyway has to be paid on this 10,000, correct? This 10,000, which is above 50 lakhs. 30% tax anyways has to be paid. Correct. Any income about 10 lakhs, you have to pay 30% tax. So 30% tax of this is 3,000. Okay. So this tax has to be paid. It will get computed automatically. When we computed uh, tax above 10 lakhs, there this 3000 is already computed. Okay. So, what is the relief which they have to give? 
actually or what is the amount he is paying extra okay because they are taking 10000 extra from him right what he is paying extra is 7000 so 3000 of this 10000 is already included in the tax where See here, when we do balance income into 30%, you are doing this, right? So calculating this, how are you calculating it? You are taking, say for the middle figure, you are this one, you are taking 50 lakh 10,000 minus 10 lakhs, correct? Into 30% you are doing. So that means you are actually taking that extra 10,000 also in this tax, 30%. Okay. So if the, if the government is now asking you that 10,000 extra, they will retail. But actually in that 10,000, 3,000 is already a part of your normal tax. So what has the government retained extra? It is that 7,000. Okay, understood? Yes, no. So here, okay, so this is how marginal relief is calculated. Now after you calculate marginal relief, so now, so whatever is your surcharge, okay, how you can calculate marginal relief is, Take whatever is your surcharge, okay, and deduct that seven thousand. Okay, if you deduct that seven thousand here, you had to pay surcharge of one lakh thirty seven thirty one thousand five fifty. Government said that okay, we will limit your surcharge to ten thousand. Okay, but out of this ten thousand, three thousand. It's already, you're, you're, you're already paying in your tax. Okay, there is tax liability. So 7,000 is what you're giving extra. So instead of 131,500, you now have to pay 7,000. So what is the relief they have given? 131,550 minus 7,000 is the relief. So this is your marginal relief. Okay. 124,550 is your marginal relief. Okay. So, the formula for that is how we will calculate it. Take income tax, I have just shown you in short how you can get it. So take income tax plus surcharge, which is this figure 140, 147,050. Okay, take this 147,050, right? And then deduct income tax on 50 lakhs threshold 13,12,500, which we calculated here. Yeah. Okay. Deduct this, right? And then what you will do? Deduct income minus fifty leaves. Okay, which is your ten thousand. So if you put it this way, you will get marginal relief of one lakh twenty four thousand five hundred. Okay. So another way, what I told you is take your uh, surcharge. Okay. Deduct. Your effective surcharge, surcharge. This is called as seven thousand is called as effective surcharge. So you actually had to pay extra in that ten thousand. You had to pay extra of seven thousand. Deduct this minus this, you will get one twenty four five fifty. Okay. So this is the formula for marginal relief. So after you get marginal relief, okay, you will you can compute recompute tax like this. This is same, okay? Till here, whatever we have done. Sir, can this. you can you show me that seven thousand? How did you arrive on that one? Seven thousand, we arrived like this. Okay. See, your total tax was fifty lakh ten thousand. Yes. Sorry, total income was 50 lakh 10,000. Okay. And yeah. your threshold is 50 lakhs. Okay. So what is extra is 10,000. No, okay. What is extra is 10,000. Now, what is being said for marginal relief? Income, which is more than your threshold. Okay. 
that will be taken as your marginal relief if marginal relief is more than income minus threshold so income minus threshold in short is 10000 okay so 50 50 lakh 10000 minus 50000 is 10000 so what is our marginal relief coming here when we computed marginal relief surcharge on tax sorry what is the surcharge on tax 131 550 yes. correct 131,550 yeah. is, is the surcharge. Now, but when you cal when you computed your tax here, okay, you have also taken balance income into 30%, right? So when I yes. take when I took balance income, I have taken 50 lakhs 10,000 minus 10 lakhs, that is 40 lakhs 10,000 into 30%, correct? Only then I got this 123. So I got I show you 40 lakhs. 10,000, correct? 40 lakhs, 10,000, how, how I got? 50 lakhs, 10,000 minus 10 lakhs. Because I am calculating income over 10 lakhs. Yes. Correct? Yes. So this is 40 lakh, 10,000 into 30%, correct? 30% rate will apply to this. That is 12,03,000, okay? So that's how we got this 12,03,000, 12, okay? So that okay. means this 10,000, I have depended tax on this 10,000 also, correct? In this 30%. Yes. Right. So when government says that see, this is your surcharge, what is your surcharge? 131,550 is your surcharge. Okay. But if your surcharge is more than, more than increase of income, that is 10,000. 10,000 is the increase of income. Surcharge is more than that. They're saying will limit your surcharge, okay, to your increase in income. So that is they are limiting my surcharge to increase in income, which is how much? Ten thousand, correct? Ten thousand is my increase in income. They are saying I'm limiting it to ten thousand. But we know that out of ten thousand, thirty percent tax already I am paying normally. Yes, correct. So what is it that I am paying them extra in lieu of surcharge? 10 minus 3 is what I am paying them? Yeah. That is that 7,000. So 7,000 is actually what I am paying extra because of surcharge, which I would have not paid had, I had my income been less than 50,000. Okay. So and your marginal relief, how we will calculate now is what is the relief now? Now, 7,000 is what you are paying extra. Okay. 7,000 is what you are paying extra because of surcharge. Now, surcharge was computed at 131,550. Okay. And, but in the end, you paid only 7,000. So, 131,550 minus 7,000 is the relief which you have got. Okay. That is called as marginal relief. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. So now we are just marginal relief is calculated. Everything is there. Now we are just computing. Uh, we are recomputing his statement. Okay. So whatever marginal relief we put earlier, that is not the real marginal relief. Right. Real marginal relief is 7000 for him now. So if we go by this, okay. Till here it is same. Same as earlier. Okay. No rebate till here. There's no change here. Okay. Right. Surcharge we have put here. No payable again. Okay. No change. So tax and surcharge payable. Same. Till here it is same table as above. Okay. There's no change here. Okay. In what we computed above. Right. So if I'll show you. Till Till here, okay. Till tax and surcharge payable. Till here is the same table I'm copying and pasting. What we have just used now. Okay. The same thing we are copying and pasting till here. Okay. Till tax and surcharge. Now just deduct the relief that you have given me. 1,24,550 is the relief that you have given. Me. Okay. So this minus this, you will get liability after surcharge. Okay, or one more way which I told you how you can get this is take the 
total tax liability. Tax liability is this plus effective surcharge is seven. Okay. It is actually the surcharge which is actually paying is his effective surcharge. This is 7,000. Add to the tax liability and this is his real tax liability. Another way if you want to see it, I'll show it in green. Okay. Take, take the total income. Okay. Reduce marginal relief. Okay. Then also you will get the same thing. This one. There are two ways of getting it. Okay, so you will have to just go and just take a look once. These are little complex calculations. Okay, so just go and try to repeat it once or twice and then you will understand. Okay, if not, you can let me know. Okay. If you have any doubt later on, you can just ask me. Okay. So, so this is his. Now this is his real tax liability, this line, right? That is liability after surcharge. Then you can apply HEC, Health and Education says. Okay, this will be 4% of this. It's 4% of this amount. That's Add these two, you will get the amount. And then if required, you can round it off. So here there, will, there is no need of rounding off because last figure is zero anyways. If last figure is zero, you don't need to round it, round it off. Okay. That's your surcharge. Sorry, uh, that's your marginal relief. Now, next we'll talk about other tax rates. Okay. Tax rates of um, other persons. So these are all quite simple. Okay. Firm tax rate is 30% flat. Okay. There are no slabs now for others. Okay. Firm or LLP 30% is the tax. The surcharge table is income up to 1 crore is nil. Above 1 crore is 12%. Okay. So marginal relief is available. Marginal relief is unjust, right? So it will be available for all. You just cannot charge anyone tax more than the income. So it is unjust. Okay. So marginal relief will be available for everyone. Okay. And then HEC is same for everyone, 4%. Okay. So this is your LLP, firm or LLP. Then company, okay, you have put uh, three rates for company. One is domestic company, right? And one is foreign company. Domestic company, you have got two rates. So you will see the total turnover or gross receipts. Okay. So if you are in the business of selling something, then total turnover. If you are in uh, in a service business, then gross receipts. Okay. The total turnover or gross receipts during previous year 2021. So why you are taking previous year 2021 is for turnover, it is assumed that 2021 is two years before your current previous year. So for turnover and all, it is assumed that to get the final figures, whatever is shared initially, okay, then there are some adjustment changes and all. And to really get the uh, correct figure of turnover, it stabilizes after two years. Okay, that's what is assumed. So which is why for comparison purpose, you use turnover two years before. So the data is finalized. Okay. So, so which is why you have to always Always for domestic companies, you have to compare turnover two years before the previous year. That turnover is taken as the okay, stable turnover. So if that is up to 400 crore, okay, then tax rate is 25%. If it is more than 400 crores, then it is 30%. Foreign companies, 40%. Okay? This is your tax rate of company. 
surcharge for company is up to 1 crore is nil. Okay. Up to 1 crore is nil. Then 1 crore to 10 crore is for domestic company 7%, foreign company 2%. About 10 crore is domestic company 12%, foreign company 5%. Okay, foreign companies are charged at a lower rate. And then marginal relief is available for everyone. You don't need to look at it at all. And HEC is 4% for all. Okay. So that's it with it. With this, our chapter on basic concepts is completed. Okay, if you have any questions, then you can ask me. Otherwise, we will go for a break. We will come back at 1. At 1, I will start residential status. Okay. So, we are, it's a bit, the, the load is a bit more on you. I understand. But it will help you complete the course early. Okay. If we do 4-4 four, four hours, it will just help you complete your course early. And it will help you. And after 1, 1 month. So, do, do everything for 1 month. After one month, you can reconsider all those who want to go for both groups. Just reconsider where, where you are and where you want to be. Based on that, you can let me know. Okay. And if you want to like go back to just one group, okay, you one group will be given to you at the at the rate which is prevalent now for one group. Okay. Other rest amount will be refunded to you. Right. So in one month, I will also help you gauge whether you are ready or not because then at least clearing one group is good right then nothing so which is why for two groups it will get more and more maybe you may manage or you may not manage okay so my role here is only to just help you in understanding if, if you are able to take that load up okay right so so we, you can come back at one. The one we will start residential status. Fine. So uh, I'm closing this lecture now because the chapter has been completed. This will go as a separate lecture. Okay then. So you can join back again. Okay at one p.m.